Our key text for today is Job 28, verse 28. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Jesus met the people on their own ground as one who is acquainted with their perplexities. He made truth beautiful by presenting it in the most direct and simple way. His language was pure, refined, and clear as a running stream. His voice was as music to those who had listened to the monotonous tones of the rabbis. But while his teaching was simple, he spoke as one having authority. This characteristic set his teaching in contrast with that of all others. Desire of Ages, page 253. In the July 2012 issue of Adventist World, there is an article titled Faith Simple, the German equivalent of Glauben Einfach, as seen on the cover of Adventist World. This article talks about how the Seventh-day Adventist Church is trying to share the gospel to the modern world, and it asks the question, how can we reach these diverse, mostly secular people and share the love of Jesus with them? It goes on to talk about the difficulties of reaching a secular world. The article also says less than 20% of all Germans enter a church, any church, on a regular basis, but that this is also a trend around the entire world. Adventist World then begins to tell us the story of Matthias Mueller, general manager of the media center of the Euro-Africa division, Stimme der Hoffnung, which is translated to Voice of Hope. Mueller's dream was to reach the secular world. Mueller had heard about the availability of an extraordinary tithe for special mission projects. As he paced the halls of the media center in Germany, he ran across Klaus Popa, one of the editors of Stimme der Hoffnung, Voice of Hope, and spontaneously asked if he would be interested in joining him in planning an innovative evangelistic approach that would use all kinds of media. TV, cinema, the internet, social networks. Then it says, later in the year during administrative meetings of the Euro-Africa division, Matthias probed the division treasurer. How big should we plan? Think big was the answer. And that's what the team did. In the summer of 2007, Matthias and Klaus spent hours brainstorming. What was needed to reach a secular postmodern society speaking an understandable language? What elements in media should be included? How should one go about getting the local churches to buy into such a program? After much of the planning had taken place, it says, In February 2010, during a Hope Channel advisory in Beirut, Lebanon, the ambitious project was introduced to media experts from around the world, and a month later the German-speaking unions formed an oversight committee and named Pastor Willie Schultz as the Faith Simple Coordinator. As part of this outreach effort, a movie was co-produced by Matthias Mueller and Klaus Popa titled My Last Day Without You. The Adventist World article explains how the Faith Simple program showed parts of this film as well as specially invited guests and how they had an interactive panel with the viewers. The review article also talks about the amount of viewers, their interaction, and the receptiveness to their program. The article also says, after more than four years in the works, Faith Simple finally went live on October 8, 2011. While the film was not made by the Media Center, the team had significant input into the script writing process and co-produced it. The movie tells the story of Nicholas, a secular German yuppie bank manager, on a mission to close down an affiliated bank in New York, and Letitia, a talented young woman from Brooklyn, growing up in a Christian home with a father pastoring a church in New York and dreaming of a music career. As these two people meet and their lives interact, their worldviews collide and many questions and conflicts arise. The Adventist Review article concludes by saying, Faith Simple is not a successful one-time event that worked in Germany in the heart of secular Europe. Faith Simple is much bigger than that. It represents a model of how to present in a culturally sensitive way unchanging truth that can connect to different age groups. It provides a holistic way of reaching the secular mind, moving beyond modernity's arguments and paying attention to Jesus' method of reaching the unreached. It underlines the need to listen and begin a dialogue with people beyond the walls of our churches. 
Lasting evangelism must always be dialogical. It begins with an invitation and continues with an honest conversation that lasts into eternity. Faith is that simple, period. Yes, faith, simple. But is it faith, pure and simple? The spirit of prophecy does tell us that in order to reach different people, we are to use different methods. Review and Herald, April 14, 1903 method determined by class of people. Let us not forget that different methods are to be employed to save different ones. And then in Review and Herald, January 17, 1907, we read, Christ used various methods. From Christ's methods of labor, we may learn many valuable lessons. He did not follow merely one method. In various ways, he sought to gain the attention of the multitude, and then he proclaimed to them the truths of the gospel. However, we are also told, when Christ is recognized as the head of all our working forces, more and more thoroughly will our institutions be cleansed from every common, worldly practice. All that is done is to bear the impress of the Holy Spirit. We are to work as Christ worked, in the same practical lines. Then we shall be safe. The divine commission needs no reform. Christ's way of presenting truth cannot be improved upon. The worker who tries to bring in methods that will attract the worldly-minded, supposing that this will remove the objections that they feel to taking up the cross, lessens his influence. Preserve the simplicity of godliness. Thus, in our simplicity, we are to always bear the impress of the Holy Spirit. The name of the film the Adventist European Media Center co-produced is called My Last Day Without You. This film contains curse words and vulgar language. Remember, in the Adventist World article, it talked about extraordinary tithe funds in connection with Matthias Mueller's dream, and that the Euro-African Division treasurer told them to think big. In talking about the apostles building up the church, Ellen White says, from this time forth, the language of the disciples was pure, simple, and accurate in word and accent, whether they spoke their native tongue or a foreign language. These humble men, who had never learned in the school of the prophets, presented truths so elevated and pure as to astonish those who heard them. Volume 3, Spirit of Prophecy, page 275. So just how big did they think on making this film? According to IMDB on the internet, the estimate for this film was a million dollars, and that doesn't include all of the faith simple TV programming to show this film to the public, or the hundreds of thousands of flyers, business cards, and posters they tell about sending out. But the amount of funds used is not what's most important here. What's more important is the principle of how we shouldn't be using funds, whether from tithe or otherwise, to co-produce a film that uses any curse words or vulgar language. This was not the method of Jesus and the apostles who used pure language. Also remember that Matthias Mueller, director of the Media Center, and Klaus Popa were the co-producers. This can be seen in the closing credits of the film. God's cause is now in need of the influence that protests against evil and strives to counteract it the influence that Christ has always demanded of his people. Let there be no delay, for the message that I am bearing is from God. While he has been calling upon his people to come out from the world, and to be separate and distinct, not touching that which is unclean, human agencies have been counterworking his work by linking up with worldly men, cultivating the spirit of commerce, and depending on worldly lawyers and worldly methods. The Lord is sorely displeased with these men who have made themselves one with the world. As you know, films typically use background music throughout the video. In this film, there is part of a rap music song that uses the vulgar SH and F words. The volume is quite low, so the average listener wouldn't notice, especially since there is dialogue going on at the same time. The vulgar words of this rap music are played in a scene where the character Nicholas is being driven into a rough neighborhood where he gets punched in the eye. The name of the rap song is Black Madoff. The creator of the rap music can be found at the first link shown above.
and currently the rap song can be listened to at normal volume at the second link. Is this the method of Christ that we should be using to reach the world? Worldly people viewing this Hollywood-style love story movie, who know the rap music, will immediately know it uses vulgar language, and then we've built an association to the Seventh-day Adventist Church with it, which could cause the world to believe Seventh-day Adventists condone the use of curse words and vulgar language. As the old saying goes, what we win them with is what we win them to. It is so easy to drift into worldly plans, methods, and customs, and have no more thought of the time in which we live, or of the great work to be accomplished, than had the people in Noah's day. Our institutions are in danger of traveling over the same ground as did the Jews, conforming to customs, practices, and traditions which God has not given. Greater spirituality needed in Adventist centers. In the centers that are formed, in some places, there is constant temptation to carry the work after worldly methods. I have had presented before me the dangers before us in the future. This light I have tried to present with pen and with voice. Let the work be carried forward intelligently by men and women of sound faith and strict religious principle. Using tithe or other funds to co-produce a film using curse words and vulgar language is a sin. Matthew 3 2 tells us, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Our church leadership must openly repent of what they've done. Will they create more movies or outreach in this manner? There must be open confession and repentance, or else God, who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, will remove his protective hand over the church, and our church, organizations, or institutions, will be punished as surely as was Israel. Ask yourself this question. Should we support anyone who uses sinful methods to try to advance the gospel? Consider the results of your answer. Do not take worldly ideas as your criterion. Let there be no departure from the Lord's methods of working. Use not common fire, but the sacred fire of the Lord's kindling. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 2 Corinthians 6.17 Are we using common or sacred fire? As Seventh-day Adventists, are we paying attention to what is really happening within our church, our organizations and institutions? Or do we just have our heads buried in the sand and think, Well, I don't see any problems. I just trust my leaders are doing the right things. It's time to wake up. Much more than this is occurring in our church. Where are the faithful watchmen? Are we becoming like the dumb dogs that don't bark, as mentioned in Isaiah 56.10? The Divine Commission needs no reform. Christ's way of presenting truth cannot be improved upon. The worker who tries to bring in methods that will attract the worldly-minded, supposing that this will remove the objections that they feel to taking up the cross, lessens his influence. Preserve the simplicity of godliness. The Lord's blessing rests not upon the minister whose speech bears the stamp of worldliness, but he blesses the words of the one who cherishes the simplicity of true righteousness. In closing, I'd like to read Job 28.28 again. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Will we, as Seventh-day Adventists, be wise and depart from evil, from using the methods of Satan and remaining pure in our outreach methods and language? This is my prayer. May God bless you as you obey and follow him.